As believers, we want to practice the rhythm of spiritual disciplines, but what if there's something we're missing in our spiritual disciplines? Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Hey, welcome to our podcast today. I'm excited uh, to be with Truett today as we talk about this subject of spiritual disciplines. So uh, let me also encourage at this point to uh, like, subscribe, Uh share, and feel free to comment. Uh, Every one of those actions helps really further our uh, reach on YouTube and social media. Those those simple actions make a difference. Yeah, if you have any thoughts or questions or anything like that, comment them. We would love to see what you have to say. Yeah, it's good. So as Christians, we are uh, we want to live a life that's ruled by Jesus. We want mm-hmm. to allow him to be Lord of the all. And one of the greatest ways that we demonstrate that is by practicing spiritual disciplines yeah. in our life, by uh, intentionally putting him in a place where he is Lord of all. And so Definitely. we choose to do that in some very tangible, and the Bible gives us some instruction and command to do that in some very tangible and transformative ways, some things that actually change us. Definitely. So uh, you, you're you in the midst of going through a series with students mm-hmm. right now yeah. on this very subject. What's yeah. So uh, at Driven Youth, we just started a series called Holy Habits, where we're talking about developing maturity through rhythm, nice. through the constant in and out habits of yeah. your life, right? And they're holy habits, habits that are set apart, habits that are the spiritual disciplines uh, that once they are incorporated in your life and you begin to develop them, you will see maturity start to develop in your life, right? So yeah. uh, we have eight holy habits that we're going over. Okay. The first four that we're doing are about self-denial habits. So habits nice. where you intentionally have to die to yourself, right? This is the spiritual Good. disciplines. Right. So with those, we have reading the Bible. That's a thing that you have to intentionally take time out of your day. You have to reorder mm-hmm. your day mm-hmm. and you prioritize reading, and connecting with God, not just reading your Bible, but mm-hmm. reading and listening for God in the word. Right. And okay. then another one is uh, the habit of generosity, giving of what is important to you to yep. someone else. And nice. we do that because we're emulating the character of God. Right. Love we it. are uh, developing that habit of being generous to others because we have, been given much right Mm -hmm. we have god's been generous to us and it takes self-denial as well Uh, another one is about fasting right the holy Mm -hmm. habit of fasting it's the ultimate self-denial of your appetite or of you know whatever social media it may be or whatever you you Mm -hmm. spend your time on fasting from that for a purpose not Mm -hmm. just fasting to fast but Mm -hmm. fasting with the intention of seeking god in place of that right and then another self-denial habit we have is solitude intentionally finding time closing out the other voices around and seeking god there so these are all habits that develop maturity through that rhythm right so that's the first four so before before you get to the next one i'm just curious i mean those those are tough for adults exactly to grasp what are you what are you seeing among students as they respond to that yeah that's that's kind of what i was talking about with them i was saying you know a lot of a lot of people hear these and think okay yes whenever i am 30 years old i will get to those things i will i'll get to fasting i will get to reading or being generous or all those things yeah what we have said is look these right here will serve as an anchor in your faith throughout yeah. whatever season you're in right. there's not an age limit on these so we're starting with the small uh the small aspect of it first you know not like okay we're going to talk about fasting let's go on a 40 day fast you know <laughs> and you know figure out what right. what this means no but we're saying hey just this week, let's just begin to develop. Let's see what does this habit look like? What yeah. would it take in your life if you're going to fast one meal? Yeah. And now think of someone that needs prayer specifically. And mm-hmm. now this week, choose a day or choose a time or choose a thing that you're going to fast from. Nice. And again, this is we have the sermon and then we have discussion groups where they get to discuss with That's a leader awesome. yeah. and they get to say, hey, <clears throat> what have you ever fasted from or what what was the result of that here's what i'm thinking about this is what i want to fast for cool and again that's really mm-hmm. what we're saying reading the bible what is it for not mm-hmm. just do this mm-hmm. but the why behind it so we want Good. people to start small and mm-hmm. understand okay 
I can see where the rhythm of this will develop maturity in mm. my life, right? It will nice. develop a greater understanding of faith. So for the next four weeks that we're going to do is uh, the holy habits of engagement, holy engagement habits, where okay. we're going to be talking about worship and prayer and gratitude and connection with others. Those are all engaging yeah. with the Lord and engaging with others. And again, these, not just for the sake of doing them, not just for the sake of religion, right. but for the sake of developing maturity in their life and developing a greater understanding of faith in their life. It's good. I love it. Yeah. Cause yeah. Um, like we've uh, been talking about here vertical, our destiny is not in our immaturity. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, the destiny that God has for our life is in our Maturity. Yes. So love all that. Yes. And another thing that we've said is that these are not just like churchy religious skills, but these are, these are life skills. Yeah. These are things that whenever they are implemented and you mm. see uh, these habits begin to develop in your life, you will see mm-hmm. a change in your mental health. Mm. You it's will true. see a change in your emotional health. You yeah. will see a change in your spiritual health. And I believe you'll see a change in your physical health as yeah, well. That's true. You will not find someone who is healthy, happy, who is knowing, uh, depths of the Lord and is mm-hmm. connecting with others and they don't have any of those eight true. engagements or self-denial habits. Yeah. yeah. You don't just stumble into all that. Exactly. You get there with that kind of yes. discipline. So why not start them young? Why not begin yeah. to instill <clears throat> these habits at a young age whenever people, you know, truly need to start small yeah. there? I love it. So um, I think we'd all agree that disciplines like that uh, are not easy. Yeah, exactly. There's a natural uh, push away from them mm-hmm. because it does. It, it invades upon our flesh, yeah. our old patterns, yep. and depending upon how long we've walked in them and not practiced spiritual disciplines, it can be harder. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, you hear you hear things like Jesus saying, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm-hmm. He acknowledges, okay, there's this tension, there's this pull to not do the spiritual, but to lean into the flesh exactly the new testament goes on talks about uh, the flesh wars against the spirit so Mm -hmm. we all know that yeah there's a war here there's a there's a tension at play but there's there's value in all of that so i think we have to acknowledge that going in this is not easy this is not something that just do it once and happens and And we're not saying hey just will your way through this no it's not that's Mm -hmm. not the purpose is just to do these Mm -hmm. things right but it's instead to trust god in what he has said and believe that by being disciplined in my mm-hmm. spiritual life, I will have a greater resolve. I will have greater direction in my life. I will have yeah. greater peace in my mm-hmm. life. And that's the driving factor. Not like, oh, if I do this, God will hopefully love me more and answer more of my no, prayers. No. no. Yeah, but it, it should get to be this place where the rhythm is more natural. Yes. The rhythm is more um, our rhythm. It's yes. our new rhythm yes. for life. So, Yeah. <clears throat> So it does kind of bring you to this place where you start to wonder, well, is there, am I doing this the right way or what, what's going yeah. on? Because the war seems more difficult than I ever imagined. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or you've tried and you've tried and you've, and you, yeah. every start of the year you're like, all right, I'm going to choose to <laughs> yeah. fill in the blank. And it just doesn't exactly yeah, happen. And, and we see that with diet plans. Yeah, we see with absolutely. other, other disciplines yeah. that we, that we bring about. Definitely. So, yeah, it definitely. so what, like what is the missing piece then? Why, why is this so common throughout the Bible, but it seems to be these days like people can never quite get the hang of it, I guess. Yeah, it's true. Well, I think that's what there's value in us discussing today. Mm-hmm. Is there uh, a, a missing element? What are we missing yeah. in spiritual disciplines? Uh, not another discipline that we're missing, but maybe a way that we're practicing yes. that reveals why we're struggling so much. Mm-hmm. Cause it is, it's a struggle and it seems to be more so than what it ought to be. Mm-hmm. Really. There should be some tension and war and conflict in the deal here, but uh, it shouldn't be that it's just impossible. It should be. We gain traction with the spiritual disciplines and they, they begin to be the new rhythm for many people. There are, but I think there might be a missing ingredient here that, that we're going to talk about today. And I think yeah. the Bible spells this out and it, it really is summed up um, in a few verses here. Mm-hmm. There's many verses in scripture that, that uh, describe what I think is missing. Um, I think it's even evident in the early pages of Scripture, even with what um, Cain and Abel bring Mm -hmm. as sacrifices to God. I believe the difference in what is happening there is can sometimes be what's missing today. The Bible says that um, 
in the in the passing of time, depending upon which version you're reading here, uh, Cain brought from the fruit of the ground. So Mm -hmm. in time, he eventually brought a sacrifice to the Lord. But it says of Abel that he brought the first of his flock. Mm. So you get a little clue here. You start reading through Scripture, you come across Exodus in the early pages uh, when God says, here's how you're to bring your offerings to me. He said, the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. We see it again in the book of Proverbs. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Yeah. You see this throughout the law. You see it throughout the sacrifices. Mm-hmm. It was the first, the first fruits yeah. that was to define what was brought to the Lord. Yeah. It all belonged to him, mm-hmm. but there was to be some that were given completely for his purposes. And it wasn't what was left over. It wasn't what you had at the end of the week. It wasn't yeah. what you could somehow manage to squeak out to give to God. Uh, it, it was to be the first. It was this tangible expression of faith that, God, I'm going to put you in the first place. You're going to be yeah. Lord of all, and I'll demonstrate that by giving you the first of all that I have. So this that might be a missing piece for a lot of folks today. Uh, I've just recently experienced some of this in my own life. I'll talk about mm-hmm. that as you get, go along a little bit here. Uh, but even Jesus would say, seek first the kingdom of God and his yeah. righteousness and all these things that the disciples and others were consumed about in their day. He says, they'll be added to you. Yeah, Those are the things that will be added, not... Yeah, you know. So uh, yeah. this is interesting biblical truth that the real power of practicing your faith, even the disciplines, is not in what you bring, but in when you bring. Yeah, it's in. It is to be the first fruits, the yeah. first part of all that God has blessed us with. So, so you're saying it wasn't Cain's gift that. It wasn't the issue of the gift or the, yeah. the sacrifice. I, I, I've, maybe. Preached it, I've preached that message too, you know, <laughs> because uh, Abel brought a lamb uh, that was, or he brought an animal <clears throat> that was from his flock that I think was a reflection of the sacrifice uh, that God made yeah. to cover Adam and Eve in their sin. It says he took an animal yeah. and sacrificed it. So, yes, there is something about what he brought, but... It was also that he brought the first. The Bible's very yeah. clear about that. Yes. That he brought the first. So I think there was an element of that that, yeah. that defined what he brought as well. So yeah. God's not looking necessarily for uh, the perfect, the best, mm-hmm. or some, or a part. He's looking for the first fruits. Yeah. And the scripture is clear with that principle. Yeah, It's definitely. also clear that... Good. That when we do that, that there is a blessing that comes that is not always easily explainable or logical. Yeah. Because, okay, let's just take our time, for example. Mm -hmm. You and I have the same amount of hours in a week. I can choose how I'm going to use those hours Mm -hmm. and structure them. And God promises, based on this truth command, that if I will give him the first fruits of all that I have, which would include my time, mm-hmm. then he is going to bless the other parts of my time. So that's just, logically, that just doesn't fit. How can yes. the same amount of time, mm-hmm. how can I, if by giving him the first part, he's going to exponentially bless the remainder Best. to mm-hmm. give me more fruitfulness in it as opposed to me giving him the latter you know, mm-hmm. or a middle or just some, or whatever I can mm-hmm. squeeze out. It's it's a principle that's throughout Scripture. It's bigger than what our logic can sometimes yeah. understand and figure out. So um, you come to the end of the Old Testament, you find this same principle in regards to uh, giving, financial giving, and, and giving to God. 
And this this is not where we're hanging out today. This mm-hmm. is not all about money, but that is it is a part of it because yeah. we're to honor the Lord with the first of all that we have. So yeah. in Malachi, he's given, uh, God is speaking through Malachi to the people. And he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Here, here are the blessings that come when we make him first. He says, uh, test me in this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that you there will not be enough room to receive it. Mm. Okay, so he's going to supernaturally yeah. expand and open up heaven to bless me in a way that I can't even contain because I've chosen to put him first. Give the first, yeah. Mm. Uh, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So he's going to open the windows of heaven. He's going to pour out blessing. He's going to hold back the enemy. He's going to cause me to be more fruitful and effective. This is pretty amazing stuff yeah, because definitely. I chose to put him in the first place. Yeah. Not just to give him a place. Yeah. Not just a compartment, not just a piece, not just a leftover, yeah. but the first <clears throat> place. Yeah. And then he says, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be mm-hmm. a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So he says, I I'll do something so profound when you honor me that others will look at it and they'll be amazed. You yeah. will be and they will be because yeah. you chose to put me first. So it's this real act of faith. It's this real act yeah. of intentionality. That says I choose to honor God with the first of all that I have. Absolutely. Um, and then I do so out of faith. I don't do it because yeah. now I have to do this. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. It's not just giving, but it's giving in faith and not mm. just like this mm-hmm. in the religious realm, but yeah. giving, saying, I don't understand how this is gonna work out, but I'm trusting <laughs> God yeah. that He is going to make this work out. Right. Yep. I am trusting, I'm putting my faith in Him in this action yep, and knowing not just so that he'll bless me, not that, no, but yep. I'm giving because this is obedience and he, I know he will bless. Yep. Yep. And it is, it's, it's an act of faith. It's a statement yeah. of faith that says, okay, he is Lord of all of my life mm-hmm. and I'm going to, I'm going to practice this in every area exactly, of yeah. my life, giving him the first. So, yeah. um, that's going to provide a framework now to talk about. Yeah, exactly some specific areas for sure so yeah so what does the first fruits like we were just talking about what does the first fruits look like uh in the spiritual disciplines area of life right in the the different ways in which we grow yeah so i think before we get into that again it's it's important to understand context and boundaries and whole perspective here so Mm -hmm. we have to understand first of all that as believers all that we do is for god's glory not talking about just a piece. Uh, we live so that he is Lord of the all. Scripture calls us to that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. He will direct your paths. Colossians would say, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. Giving thanks to the God the Father through him. So our lives are lived all for him, but the way we tangibly express that is by giving him the first parts of all that we have this and allowing him to have it completely for his purposes. So to, to your question, to the point, how does that all work? How do we practice this? Let's, let's talk about it in terms of some categories Mm -hmm. and how we can practice this. So let's think about, first of all, um, in something we've all been given time. Yeah. Touched on this already. Yeah. But let's think in terms of time as a resource God has given us, he's blessed us with. And so now I want to honor him so that all of my time is his. But how do I uniquely do that in the first parts of my time? The Bible tells us some ways to do that. Uh, For example, we give the first part of our week, every week as believers, many people already do this as believers, we we go to worship mm-hmm. on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. That's the first day of the week. It's not the last day of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the second day of the weekend. I get it, but it's not the last day of the week. Monday's mm-hmm. not the first day. Sunday's yeah. the first day. If you yeah. need a reminder, just look at a calendar. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is what the, the believers, New Covenant, New Testament believers yep. practiced. Now on the first day of the week, it says in Acts 20, uh, verse 7, when the disciples came <coughs> together to break bread. So they gathered yeah. on the first, first day of the week. Definitely. Church didn't just say, hey, what's a good day we could all get together? Now, the first day of the week was, is important. They chose that. Jesus rose on the first day of the week. So we meet and we give him the first of the week. It's a way of saying by faith, Jesus, you are Lord over all, and I give you the first day of the week. So we gather <clears throat> with other believers to worship, to serve, to learn, to grow, to connect, to share. We do all of that out of a statement of faith to say, <clears throat> I have a lot of things in my week. I yeah. have a lot of things on my plate. <clears throat> yeah. I have a lot of things that I am doing and need to do, but I'm going to honor God and uniquely give him the first part of my week. Yeah. So I give him that piece Definitely. and it sets the tone for the week. Yep. It gives me the direction. It gives me blessing. And <clears throat> as he promised, he multiplies everything else after that. He, he'll bless. He will open heaven for those who walk in this discipline. So that's yep. the first, I think. Yeah, that's definitely. The first part of our week. Yep. Uh, but another aspect of our time gets down into the daily. Yeah. So I can also practice this in the first part of my day. Yeah. In the first part. Again, <clears throat> we all have 24 hours in a day. The day or time that the day begins for us when we wake up, and there's a lot of things we all need to do. Yeah. To and, do. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, man, it's easy to, when that alarm clock goes off, to just start thinking, okay, I need to do this today. I need to mm-hmm. see this person. Yeah. Conduct this business, make this yeah. happen, fulfill this task. <clears throat> but as a matter of faith, what we can do is set aside the first part of our day yeah. <clears throat> and honor God with that, to give him whole attention yeah. in that moment. Exactly. Uh, we see Jesus doing this. In, in Mark mm-hmm. chapter 1, verse 35, it says, Now in the morning, uh, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Jesus practiced this. Yep. A lot of things that were going to happen in the day. Yep. But Jesus intentionally gave the Father his first part of his day. And there's, there's powerful benefit in this. Yeah. And, uh, I recently experienced this um, and didn't even realize what was happening at first. Um, but as I as the new year began, and I thought, okay, I want to practice this in my life. Um, <clears throat> I mean, just honestly speaking, from a ministry perspective, yeah. I'm in the Bible yeah. during the day. I'm totally. studying, preparing, counseling, having discussions. Yeah. Not so, just like Sunday mm-hmm. sermon, but you also have your men's breakfast, and you got this and staff meeting, yeah, and all. And counseling, all of that, very <clears> much. <throat> so yeah. I'm, I'm in the Bible, but I thought, okay, I want to make sure that I'm doing this. And all of a sudden, I realized that I had gotten into this routine where I would wake up in the morning, and mm-hmm. first thing I do, grab my phone and start the scroll. Yeah. And, oh yeah. You know, I'm in this social media, and then I move over to this social media. Then I'm checking mm-hmm. this social media. Mm-hmm. Then I'm checking this news account, and then I'm checking, you know, this other account, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I'm, and all of a sudden, thirty minutes have gone by. And like, you're well, like, all right, well, I'm time to get going. Yeah. Ha- take a shower, and here we go. Yep. And I didn't realize that what that was doing. Yeah. What that what I was practicing yeah. and what that was causing. Yeah. Until I said, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to put this into real practice in my life. I'm going to give this first moments mm-hmm. to God. So I get up and I begin this practice just a week ago. And I set out, and for me personally right now, I thought I'm going to read through uh, the life of David. Mm-hmm. I was kind of preaching through some of that. I thought I'm going to read through his whole life. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to begin here. I'm going to read a chapter a day. So I started doing that. <clears throat> and, Everything that we have read so far about, you know, from Malachi, from yeah. Proverbs, it started coming true. All of a sudden, my thoughts were more clear. All of a sudden, it seemed like God was just opening up heaven, and it was it was like it went from a trickle to a fire hose well, um, for me. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I felt like I couldn't write enough, plan enough, get it yeah. all down enough. There was All of a sudden, there was... Yeah. More creativity, more clarity, more direction, 
uh, more closeness with God because I had chosen to honor him with the first part of my day. And I'm still doing it, and it's still happening. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I've seen this. I've seen this played out for me. Definitely, yeah. Uh, That's recently. awesome. And I think, oh, what? Yeah, and that's why I thought, yeah. is this a missing piece yeah. that we're all yeah. missing? Because you might think, yeah, well, I can't do that in the morning. I'm, my head's too foggy, and I need my I coffee, like and read. I need to get to the work. I need to get home, and maybe at yeah. night, at 10 o'clock, before I lay down. Then, yeah. And I've done that before. Exactly, yeah. And it's God blesses yeah. that. But yeah. just saying. There's a difference whenever it's the first fruit. Something about that, for me, yeah. it has been, and it seems to be consistent yeah, with Scripture. If you're going to give the first part <laughs> Really does. I can I can start trying to logically explain that. Yeah. It's like okay, well, it does set my priorities for the day, and it does set my mind clear yeah. for that. I can logically try to defend all of that, and yeah, explain exactly. all that, but it it does not start with like oh, let me let me choose to you know take the first thirty minutes, however whatever time yeah, it is of right. your day, and sit down, and I'm like I'm not going to do anything else that's going to be outside of like in my normal daily life, but I'm just going to read. I'm going to yeah. connect with God, you know. <clears throat> But you see how much that changes, and you're doing that by faith, not by logic, yeah. but by faith. Right. And I can't logically, tangibly yeah. explain why. I'm just telling you from a reality perspective, it's what, it's what happened. Yeah. It has happened. Yeah. And so That's awesome. It's consistent with his word. It's what he yes. promised would happen if we, if we chose to honor him first. So yeah. that just became a launching point for me to think, okay, well, Let's talk about all the other areas then as well. If that's true for time, it's true for all the areas, then it would be true for possessions as well. Yeah. Uh, so much of the Bible talks about that, honoring God with what the first have. fruits. Yeah, exactly. The intention there was to a, a, a culture that was more agrarian, and they grew their crops, and they uh, farmers, mm-hmm. and they, they understood um the first fruits, the first mm-hmm. uh, following benefits, results, blessings that came, yeah. that belonged to God. And so right off the top, you gave to him from that. And it's still true. It's a practice uh, that didn't end with uh, the new covenant. Yeah. In fact, it's fulfilled. And we're even called the first fruits yeah. you know, uh, of what is to come. So mm. it's another discussion. Yeah. Together, but um, <laughs> I'll start thinking about, okay, well, all that I possess, okay, so I'm thinking about physical items. Think about, okay, house and car and TV and computer yeah. and my phone and bank account. We just kind of go down the line yeah. here, clothes, food, all that I possess, Yeah, it all belongs to the Lord. Mm-hmm. But what am I doing to give him the first of all of that so that I honor him with the first of all that I have, my house. What am I doing to honor him yeah. with the first impression that people have when they come in? The mm-hmm. first contact people have with me. Uh, all the first of, of all that I possess, my car. Am I allowing him to be Lord of my car and how I think about how I'm going to use my car and my TV yeah. and my computer and my phone? So yeah. the first part of what I do, the first you know, moments I spend on it, is it to glorify God in that moment? And yeah. setting aside that time, it does. It has a powerful impact mm-hmm. on the rest of the use. Yeah, spiritual, Definitely. spiritual principle and truth. Uh, we know this is true from uh, our income as well. And yeah, people have been in church any amount of time have heard sermons or messages, <clears throat> series about the importance of giving and honoring God with the first fruits of our increase so that our income we tithe we give a 10 percent or an offering uh an amount we choose from faith to give to the lord to give into the local church and and those are done uh from the first not the last it, it's easy and and heather and i have done this in the past to say okay well uh, sunday's coming up let's see what we've got left over yeah yeah <laughs> to give see what 10. we can give I, yeah I so know that, yeah. but the, really the first fruits is, all right, the day Here's is beginning. This. The week yeah. is beginning yeah. as, a, as a matter of faith. Yeah. I'm going to take this increase that I just received or income, yeah. whatever it is. And of that, I'm going to take the first part. Yeah. And as give soon that as that to check Lord. is deposited. <laughs> exactly. That's not the fun part, but no. <laughs> it's the obedience it's part. It's the obedient part. And, yeah. and then the blessing comes later. Exactly. And there's, yeah. 
story after story yes. within our family mm-hmm. and within the church. So people who say, I yeah. chose to honor God like this. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, a check came in the mail I didn't expect. All of a sudden, yeah. this company said this bill uh, has been reduced. It's yeah. unexplainable. Or someone came and gave us something. It's just story after story of how God supernaturally blesses in yeah. ways that you can't always explain logically, mm-hmm. but they are tangible nonetheless. Definitely. So, Definitely. Uh, let's talk about a third category then. So there's time, there's possessions. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that we've all been given uh, also from God is relationships. Yeah. We all have people that we know. And if you think of that as a, a resource, something tangible given to us by God, they are those people and the relationships we have with them, then there should be an element that that all belongs to God as Mm -hmm. well. And then we give the first parts of that to God for him to uniquely use, set Mm -hmm. apart for him. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay, so then with with those relationships and first fruits, what would you say uh, giving the first fruits of uh, a marriage what does that look like? Giving the first fruits of your marriage to God. Yeah. So let me let me start first with what you talked about earlier with the students. I think this is so it fits so well. Here mm-hmm. you are talking about young people who are at the first parts of their life, their yeah. adult life. Yes. And you're teaching them to give of themselves to the Lord. Well, yeah. Man, there's only blessing that's yeah. gonna await yeah. in their twenties and thirties yes. and beyond if they'll practice that. Exactly. But when it comes to marriage, the, the same principle would apply. Okay, mm-hmm. so the first parts of my marriage. So uh, think about the marriage altar. You're getting when the day you're getting married, let's let's give this day <laughs> yeah. to the Lord. This is this is a covenant I make. So what I'm yeah. establishing here is not just an agreement, yeah. not just a contract, yeah. not just uh we'll see how this works out. Yeah. No, I want to honor God with my marriage. This is a covenant I'm entering into. I want to honor him so that my marriage looks like what he says a marriage should look yes, like. Exactly. So by its very purpose, I'm I'm giving the first part of the purpose. But I also give the first part of the my week, my day, my conversations to bring Christ into it. Okay, what mm-hmm. does he what does he have to say to me and my wife? So that yeah. means having some conversations yeah. like okay, Having, what yeah. what's where's God working in your life right? Yeah, now? exactly. So that becomes a priority. That's not yeah. just a leftover. That's not know. just add on, but it's a first thing. It's a yeah. first fruit. Yeah, it's not it's not a leftover after we've done all kinds of other stuff in the week yeah. and it's Saturday night and we're spent and it's eleven o'clock yeah. and we're putting our head on our pillow and it's like, oh we better have a spiritual conversation. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I, not at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this to the the energetic the energetic, the passionate, yeah. the purposeful part of my marriage. I'm gonna let exactly. that be the first part. Exactly. I'm gonna have spiritual conversations. I'm gonna pray with my wife. Mm-hmm. We're gonna bring Christ into the conversation yep. of my life. Yep, yeah, definitely. Okay, so then uh, that's the first fruits of the marriage. What would uh, giving of the first fruits of parenting look like with uh, your kids, or and again, even with your spouse and how you parent? Yeah, uh, giving the first fruits in that. What does that look like in that relationship? Yeah, so um, we recently had here at Vertical parent child dedication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this was a, a tangible way. Yeah, that parents definitely. stood in front of the church and made this statement of faith that says we want to raise our children mm-hmm. in the ways of the Lord. So we commit to that before you and, and ask you to pray for us in this process. That is a way of putting children the first fruits for God's purposes to say, all right, faith is not just an add-on, a piece uh, that we're going to extend into our life, but no, this is a priority for us. Yeah. So. That's one way. I think mm-hmm. by bringing Christ into the first parts of family times. Yeah. You know, if there's going to be a, a family meal, that was always important to us. Yes. We sit down at a table. We're mm-hmm. going to share a meal. We're going to talk about, uh, one, we're going to pray. Mm-hmm. And then two, we're, yeah, we're going to give the first fruit of the time of the, the meal, the event, whatever it is. Still practice that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're also going to give the first part of the intent yeah. of this gathering. If yeah. it's a birthday, if it's a holiday, 
We're going to talk about where God is in this. Yeah. It's harder now with uh, a lot of grandkids in the <laughs> yes. room. Yeah. But we take Still that take moment. the time. Yeah. I think it's important for us to remember and for the children, the grandchildren to see. Mm-hmm. I think that becomes real demonstrable ways for parents to do that with yes. their children. And yeah. Definitely. Uh, even when it comes to education and things you're yeah. learning. But where's God in this? Yeah. What does he have to say about this mm-hmm. subject? You put him first in each one of those yeah. areas. And I would even say just on that, it's like you ask those questions and it's not just like, oh, yes, let me give the quick Sunday school answer. Uh, no. Here it is, Jesus. <clears throat> no, but like those are things, again, you have to work at. You yeah. have to you have to seek where is God in this in this yep. uh, trial that I'm going through as a family, you know, or this uh, yep. even again in the education realm. Like, where yep. is God in this? What what direction do we need to go? And you know, what are you finding out in school? All this kind of stuff. Yep. That's yep. they're all things you have to work at, but they are worth it, and yeah. you see benefits from it. Yeah, and and I get it. You know, I get parents going to say. Man, we're already strapped for time. I can't imagine adding yeah. one more yeah, you yeah. Know, organized conversation with the family. Look, you're not going to be able to logically comprehend yeah. all of this. Don't yeah. don't attempt to logistically start with how this is going to be better or yeah. beneficial. Start with from faith how this is going to be beneficial. Definitely. We're going to honor God. And you, you'll see your time, your energy, the yes. clarity, the creativity, blessed. Yep. And you'll see windows open from heaven that you... Definitely. Cannot imagine or under could understand. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So then, what about the relationships of friendships? I know everyone has friends, yep. and uh, that looks different for everyone. But what does that what does that relationship look like with first fruits? Giving the first fruits to your friends. Yeah. So if we think of them in terms of they are blessings as well. They yeah. are things that people and relationship that God has given to us. And I want to honor Him with the first part of those. Well, then. Again, you go back to intent and purpose. Okay, why do I have this friendship? Uh, mm-hmm. Is it so that I can personally gain from it? Is there something for me to get from this relationship? No, that's not first fruits. Mm-hmm. That's me fruit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> say, okay, God, I want to honor you in this. What uh, What can I do to invest in this relationship that's that will encourage them in the faith? And then how is this relationship benefiting my faith? I want to honor God with the purpose of it. And then... Yeah what I do in that relationship, how, what I talk about in that relationship, what's the direction in this relationship. I want to honor God with honor him with the first part of the intent and the time and the activities of yeah, this friendship, not definitely. spent in frivolous things or things that don't honor God. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You want to, you know, begin to diminish those things and let's, yes. let's put first, let's put Jesus is Lord over all, but mm-hmm. especially in the first part of what this yeah. is all about and to begin with. You'll see things change whenever that happens. Exactly, Definitely. man. Just opportunities for spiritual conversations, yeah. opportunities for change, exactly. all of that happens. Yeah. Again, I'll go back to the mental health change. It's Emotional true. health will change yeah. whenever God is getting the first fruits of your relationships, yeah. you know, your friendships, your parenting, your marriage, all that stuff. But another thing I think, you know, with friendships, uh, I would say, I don't know, 80% of the way people keep up with others mm-hmm. these days is through social media, uh, mm-hmm. through the online community, whatever yep. way that is. Mm-hmm. So how do you give the first fruits even in that regard? Because most people, friendship, maybe you'll hang out with some people throughout the week, but most of the time you are going to be keeping up with people just online. Yeah, it's become the platform that we relate. It is a social mm-hmm. media. Definitely. So it has yeah. relational components to it. So I get that social media can be destructive, but it can also be a powerful tool. And if I choose to honor God in this tool, yeah. resource that God's mm-hmm. given me, it could be that all of a sudden social media could be radically transformed. Yeah. If every believer said, all right, I'm going to give the first parts of my thoughts about yeah. this, my use of it, exactly. my purpose in it, my statements in it. What I post, what I repost, what I like, what I heart, what I share, what yep. I comment on. I'm mm-hmm. going to give him the first, my first thought about every one of those is going to be to honor him. Yep. <laughs> you tell me social media that, wouldn't yeah, change? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> at the very least, your feed would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, what comes up on your feed would change and and you would, and God would yes. use you in other people's lives. Exactly. Windows of heaven open up. Yes, absolutely. The, the enemy held back. Yeah, absolutely. Fruitfulness would increase. It's yep. the promise. Yep. And I think that's also just so important. And again, speaking of social media and all that stuff, 
giving the first fruit of your speech, mm-hmm. giving the first fruit, you know, in your comments yep. and in your mm-hmm. messages and in your, yep. you know, texts, all that kind of stuff. Yep. That's that's where the big difference is in all of this kind of the thread between all of the relationships yeah. is giving the first fruits of your speech, not being the one who's always cynical, not being the yep. one who's always criticizing, not yep. being the one who's always finding the wrong yep. or not even, you know, not being the one who's just only there for comedy, you know, not, you know, but yep. instead yep. giving the first fruits of your speech again, back to like the intent of your speech and yep. back to, um, you know, when you're, when you're speaking, how you're speaking, all that stuff. Yep. That's so important with the first fruits yeah. uh, in all of the relationships. Yeah. And, and I get it. People say, I really want to clean up my speech. I'm trying not to use, you know, this word or this profanity or this, yeah. this conversation. Um, you, you can try not to do that and you'll war with it for a long time. But if you choose to give God the first fruits of it, you might just see that be a much see easier change. victory than you ever e- thought possible. Exactly. Yeah. It's really, really true. Yep. All Definitely. right. That's great. That, that's all in the context of relationships. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's mm-hmm. talk about one more. And we're really, we're headed toward the biggest. Yeah. We're headed toward yes. the one that really perhaps makes the greatest difference, but we're not there yet. Let's mm-hmm. do one more category first. Mm-hmm. And it is, um, category the big big picture of pursuits and passions yeah so when jesus talked about first commandment is to love the lord your god with all your heart soul mind and your strength all your you know vitality your Mm -hmm. energy your strength i think it kind of fits into this so yeah in every one of our lives we have this sense of our drive our our direction for life yeah so if i'm going to honor god with that i think okay what what is my life to be about? I'm not going to just be a, a a person who goes to work, comes home, has a family, <laughs> and then I chair. yeah <laughs> watch TV or videos or whatever, and then and then I have a little bit of faith. Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to start with my drive being to honor God with my life. Yep. Okay. Now I just made a big statement. That's different. Yeah. Now I just reframed everything. And if you choose to do that, then you make that your goal. It'll reframe every decision you yeah. make. Yep. Start thinking yep. about career. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to honor God with my career. That doesn't mean everybody in the world has to be in the vocational ministry. <laughs> no. That's not what no. this is. But you will have a ministry everywhere you go. Yes. When you say, my career is to do X, Y, Z, yep. I'm going to honor God in it and that's mm-hmm. going to be my drive for every conversation every interaction yep. every relationship to give god the glory and show forth his character and show that jesus is lord but you just revolutionized your life yes you just changed everything and you changed the, your your work where you're at you've just changed it all yep that's right and god promises he'll bless that mm-hmm. you do trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in mm-hmm. all your ways, acknowledge him, mm-hmm. not just on Sunday, yep. not just in the morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. That includes career. Yeah. Um, so another area in this category of strength is in line with our, our own urges and appetites. Mm-hmm. This gets very physical. All of a sudden yeah. we talk about drive come down to urges and appetites and we think about food and we think about drink and we think about uh, things I want to be involved in. The Bible says there is a way to honor him with the first of all that. And that is through the discipline you mentioned earlier of fasting. Yeah. That's a very tangible way of saying, all right, with all the urges that I have, I'm going to honor God first with them and put him in the driver's seat. So Mm -hmm. even appetite of for food i'm going to limit that deny mm-hmm. my flesh and honor him with it and then he will bless as a result you'll find yourself finding victory over the enemy and other yeah. areas because you've learned to discipline and deny the flesh definitely but you you start seeing health come into your life yes physical emotional mm-hmm. mental relational yeah. Because you've chosen to honor him first. Yeah. And you've chosen to not be the one who's determining every single decision in your life, right? You're the one, yeah. you're saying, <clears throat> I'm going to step back, put God forward and seek him even in my discomfort, even yeah. whenever I'm, uh, you know, 
hurting, struggling, whatever it is, if you're fasting, you know, yeah. I'm I'm choosing to actively deny myself to seek him. And I, that's yeah. going to change the order of your life. Yeah. And, you know, culture may agree, disagree, doesn't matter. Yeah. It's what we do as people of faith. At this time, I think culture is starting to catch up with it because you start seeing things like intermittent fasting yeah. and other things coming along. Yeah. And people say, oh, this is really beneficial to my health. I've mm-hmm. seen this change and this change. Well, it's great. Yeah. Cool. I'm we're catching up to God's ways. Yes, exactly. You know? Yeah. Now, now, whenever you're fasting in faith, that's yeah, the difference. Yeah, so that's you know? different. It's not just a physical thing. Yeah. It's, it's in faith. I'm, exactly. I'm putting the spirit in the lead, in the flesh, in the back seat, mm-hmm. denying the flesh, all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then choosing to use my my passions, energy, and strength to serve. To use. Okay, I have talents and abilities that God has given me. I'm going to use those to glorify Him. So I think of um, some folks in our church who joined, a couple of men in particular, when they joined, they looked through the list of ways that people can serve here at Vertical, and they said, oh, man, I don't know. I'm just not good at working with preschoolers, and I don't think I'd be really good in singing, or I don't think I'd be good at working with tech, or I'm not sure I'd be great in working, whatever. You know, the list yeah. is. But each of these two men separately, different times, said, hey, my real, my real strength and passion is I love to – cook i love to barbecue and smoke meat and yeah okay all right let's pray see what happens so um we do they do and they say we want to honor god in this way put him first well pretty soon we're working on some things as staff come up with uh we have some new member events next step dinners say well we should ask those guys yeah <laughs> if they'd like to do this and so we do, and for them, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I've just, just, <laughs> I've just found my purpose in life, yes, you know? exactly, yeah. And, and that's what they told me. They said, man, I remember when we first joined, and we wrote this down, this you know, this is the way I'm going to honor God, and here I am. And they're so filled with passion for yeah. it. They didn't say, like, oh, yeah. okay, okay, when yeah. do I have to do it? <laughs> it's going to take all day. No, yeah. they're, like, fired up yeah. about this. Exactly. And that's what we're finding throughout our, our church is people who are looking for ways to honor God with the first fruits of what they have been given. Their talents, whether it is singing or art or influence or working with students or children, whatever it might yeah. be, they're using what God has given them, first part of it to honor him with, and God is blessing as a result. Definitely. Right. Definitely. So let's move on to what we've been talking about is yeah. Perhaps the greatest area. Yeah. This is the one that um, is maybe the most overlooked. Yeah. And I would say is the toughest because it's not a tangible thing like all the other ones okay. we talked about. The okay. other ones, you can see, you understand your passions, you know what time is, you have possessions. You yeah, know, there's all physicality of these, to yes, all of Yes, all of the things. I know one, I understand the first of this. I understand the first of my passions, the first of my heart, first mm-hmm, of my family, all that mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. This is different because you can't, you don't see it. Yeah. So uh, Jesus again said, "You shall." Here's the first commandment: You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So we've talked yeah. about strength um, and heart, but this idea of soul and mind. Okay, this gets into uh, again a place that's not so physical, mm-hmm. but it is the area of our thoughts and our emotions. Yeah. And so that has been given to us. Yes. The very fact that Jesus calls us to love him with those mm-hmm. means that there is the need to do that, mm-hmm. the command to do that, and the possibility of doing that. Yeah, definitely. And that there's a, a benefit. He puts it at the first. Yeah. Uh, out of yeah. all the commandments, here here's the first. Yep. So here's the first fruit. So yeah. you got to put it in this category. Okay, God, you have given me a mind. Yeah. You have given me the ability to think, process uh, life and him and myself and others. And so I want to honor him with the first part of my thoughts. Yep. Okay. That's different. That's a different way. And I'll, I think to just make this clarification is, is important that you are not your thoughts or you are not your emotions. They are not who you are. You have been given them, right? And they they do, I mean, again, it goes back to the flesh. Mm-hmm. You know, the flesh, your thoughts 
can make you absolutely spiral. They right. can make you just go way downhill. And yep. same for your emotions. Your yep. emotions can send you downhill. But just because you have a thought, that does not mean that's who you are, right? Just yeah. because you feel emotions, that does not mean that's who you are. Yep. And I think that's important to dis- love that. to decipher yep. in this this discussion, you know, and giving the first of your thoughts that come into your mind. Yeah, right? well, you're right. I love that because here's what Mark says, Mark 12, 30. And Jesus is saying this, and he makes all that description yeah. and, and delineation here of separation. Yeah. He says, and you, yeah, who you yes. are, shall love the Lord your God. So here's me yes. doing something, and he says, yeah. with, with. With these things. Yes. With yeah. your heart. With your soul. Yeah. With your mind. So yeah. those are things given to us. That you are to. That are not us. Yeah. Yes. But they are ways to define mm-hmm. uh, what we do mm-hmm. with who we are. Woo. I Definitely. just got all That's good. philosophical. Yes. But it's important. <laughs> it's important. I yeah. am, if you're a believer, you are a child of God. Mm-hmm. You do belong to him. You have been redeemed. You are forgiven. Yeah. Those are all things that are important. I exactly. am seated with yeah. him in heavenly places. That's all who I am. Now I'm yeah. going to take who I am and honor him with what I've got in this context, my thoughts. Yes, absolutely. So the things that I think I want to honor him with those, we all think about a lot of stuff. Yes. In fact, for most of us, if not all of us, once that alarm clock goes off in the morning, your thoughts are, zzz, yes. zzz, they're going. Yeah, exactly. that's what we do all day long. Yeah, memories, fears, you know, uh, you name it. Uh, there's a million things that go yep. on. The things to do, yep. uh, all the stuff. Yep, they're all there. And yep. so our mind is this piece of real estate, if you yep. will. And so if I'm going to honor God with the first fruits, then I want to give Him the first thoughts. Yeah. So for every subject mm-hmm. that comes up. Because that's what happens throughout yeah. the day. Subjects come up, interactions happen. Yeah. I want to give him the first thought about that subject. Definitely. Yeah. Again, if if it is that the memories of your life, maybe it's negative things that you're yeah. remembering, and that yeah. the the tape of sin, in a sense, is right. playing again. You don't go all the way through all of that stuff and then say, "Well, I guess I'll see what God has to say about that." <laughs> no. Whenever you recognize that's going on, you say, first fruits." Are going to God. Yep. What does God say about this? You know, whatever thing that happened in your past. Now I'm going to see this. If I'm going to think about it, I'm going to think about it through the lens of Christ. Yeah. You know? And if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to let that. That's going to be, be the first thought. Yeah. That's the. First I'm not going to keep yeah. playing that old VCR tape yeah. of my past. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Or I'm maybe it's I'm fearful about something that's ahead. Now, if it's fearful of something that's ahead, again, you can go all the way down that line of thought and then yes. say, hmm, well, I guess I ought to maybe pray about it, you know, now <laughs> yeah. that I'm, now that I've just or, had an anxiety attack. Or, yeah. Or now I need to self-medicate because yeah. I've just gone too far down this road. Exactly. Yes. yes. No, but instead, whenever you catch yourself on the fear train, you say, first fruits, yep. what, what? is important right now. What has God said God about... God has not given me a spirit of fear, exactly. but a power of love and a sound mind. Yep. So that, exactly. that is letting him have the first fruits. Yes. So uh, something comes into our life that we weren't expecting, and it's difficult, and it's painful, and it's trial, and it's trouble. Yeah. Oh, boy, here I go. Now I can start down the path. Yeah. What is going to happen about this? What do I do yeah. about this? I can get yeah. worried. Your emotions fearful, are heavy. And get anxious. I can get angry. I can yeah. get depressed. I can do all that stuff. Yeah. Or I can turn to truth. Say, okay, God, I want you to have the first part of how I yeah. think about this situation. Yeah. Can it all joy when you fall into various trials? Don't the test of yeah. your faith produces patience. Okay, now I have a That's perspective, different. a yeah. purpose. Exactly. I'm giving him the first part of how I yeah. think yes. about the thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So now Ooh. imagine doing that and how that would revolutionize your mental health, yes. your emotional health, your spiritual health, your physical health. If you if you don't have if you don't give God the first fruits in those areas, you will be mentally sick. You will be yes. emotionally sick. Yep. Spiritually sick. Yep. You will get physically sick. Yep. If you're not giving the first fruits and if you don't 
uh, not not just like oh you're not giving, but you're you're not connecting the dots and what God has done already. Yeah, and uh, there's so much out there in the Word yep. that God has promised that you're that we don't go into in faith. Yeah. And you know it's um it's sad because I, I I've I've said this and I've heard this. It, I can't help what I think. Well, you can. Yeah, you actually can. You're and you have a, to. You have to. You're not a slave of your thoughts. Yes. The fact you that are Jesus not says, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with, that means you have a choice. Yes. You can choose which way your thoughts mm-hmm. go. You can let them go down the path of yep. despair and grief and fear and anxiety, or you can stop them yeah. and and derail that and then, and then get on the truth train yes. <laughs> yes. instead. So exactly. um, you, you don't have to be a slave. No. No. Then the other area related to this is emotions. Mm-hmm. Jesus talked about loving with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. He made a little separation there. Yeah. And so there are our thoughts, but there there are how we feel about things. And this is another one where it's easy to fall into the line of, well, I can't help how I feel. Yeah, you well, you can and, and you must. Yeah. If you and don't, this, you're... You, you're a slave. <laughs> You're a slave, yeah. You're a slave to your feelings. And sadly, people are. Mm-hmm. But this is where Jesus offers us hope. You you do not have to be what you feel. Yeah. Um, I've I've been in that. I've I've been the slave to my feelings, and it's mm-hmm. miserable. Yeah. I've been to the, the slave to my feelings of depression or fear or anxious or whatever mm-hmm. or rejection, um, hopelessness. I've been there. It's yeah. miserable. Yeah. Everybody knows what that that moment is like where yeah. your emotions take over and they jump in the driver's seat and you're, you're in the back seat getting sloshed around. Yeah. Um, the way Jesus described this is if you have an option, a choice, we don't have to let our emotions drive. In fact, the way you get ahead of this deal is by choosing to honor him with the first parts, the first yeah. fruits of your emotions. Exactly. If I'm going to feel something about a subject, a person, I'm going to let those feelings be driven by truth. I'm going to let those feelings, um, or I'm going to submit those feelings to truth, I yes, should say. exactly. I'm going to take the first part of it and say, nope. You, mm-hmm. Whatever I'm naturally feeling, whatever others have told me I should feel, no, not first. Yeah. What God says first. I think we have an example of this in the New Testament yeah. that describes feelings but then intentionality and then the result. Mm -hmm. So Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, be anxious for nothing. So there's the emotion. There's the raw emotion of a moment that where chaos is happening. Mm -hmm. Anxious thoughts want to take over. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Here is the first fruit action. Yeah. I'm going to choose to go to God with this feeling. Yep. Here's the result. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, yeah. will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here's the result. Yeah. Heaven opens. Yeah. Protection comes. God holds back the enemy. He guards your thoughts and your mind and your emotions. Yeah. And he is glorified in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's just over and over yes. again. The pattern is there. Yes. And, if and that, we, that's something you have to have to bring to the table anytime yeah. you have the spiraling thoughts, you have yeah. the overwhelming emotions, and you have the yeah. uh, just anxiety, stress, whatever you say. This has to be the first thing that that comes to mind, the first fruits of these actions, right? Yeah, it does. Not not the not the pacifying of the emotions, yeah, no. not the self-medication of the emotions. Yeah. And not but, the, okay, after I've worn myself entirely out, maybe now I'll see if God can do anything about yeah, this. Yeah, maybe then I'll pray about it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Woo, good. Yeah. So, yeah, there's the discipline right there, uh, the principle in the New Testament. Yeah. Don't let emotion rule. Seek God in it. Let him have the first place in it by your prayer. Mm-hmm. And then watch peace fall. Yes. Out of heaven, yes, into your mind and your emotions. So, yep. 
such a powerful principle. And I do think it's the missing ingredient for a lot yep. of us. Uh, it, when it comes to spiritual disciplines, we want to do them. But if we're going to do them, the Bible says the way is through first fruits, by giving him the yep. first part. And I just think it will, it will revolutionize every area in our life as I've experienced it. And I'm sure many of you have as well. Yes. Uh, we like to think in terms of what we give. God seems to be leaning more toward when you give than being out of what you give. Yes. So Absolutely. we'll close with, with a verse that it's in the old Testament that defines this one more time. It reminds us of this. And this is, this is when Samuel is the prophet is talking to Saul, the king and Saul has said that he was going to give these grand gifts to God, these sacrifices to God, but all the while, while he was in active disobedience to God. And so Samuel confronts him because Saul's hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. And Samuel says, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? The answer is no. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Yeah. So this really sets the tone for all of these areas. Um, to put him first is better than just doing the discipline. No matter what the sacrifice or time of day, events, whatever it is, to obey is better. Give him the first fruits and watch the windows of heaven open in ways you could not even logically comprehend and see if he doesn't show himself faithful and bless so that others even look and say, wow, God yep. has blessed them. Yep. You Absolutely. won't understand it. They won't comprehend it, but they will see it and know God alone has done yes. this. So, Yes. Good, good stuff, good stuff. Well, um, thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you for listening today and be a part. Uh, it's our mm -hmm. prayer that, that these kind of practical applications of truth would be be the rhythm of your mm -hmm. uh, our goal is to lift him up and live him out that's what this podcast is all about so again i'd encourage you to share it with others comment let us know thoughts yeah. or maybe some stories of how this has happened in yeah. your life and you've seen this this lived out um, it's our goal to proclaim the gospel and help others walk in the truth and the freedom we have in jesus christ so um, blessings to you keep on lifting him up and living him out